My name is Carlos Rivas Thomas, and I am one of the uh, mosquito, one of the many mosquito uh, royal family, and um, also uh, representing the Council of Elders of the Mosquito People. And um, our hope is that the U.S. would listen, and also the other people beside other countries, beside the U.S. that can see this, would, li would see and listen to uh, what is going on in our um, region. We now live under the Nicaraguan Sandinistas occupation, and there is a lot going on that the world don't really know. As I was talking with... Uh, my friends earlier that we need like our need is great and our rights are being taken from us we live in a land that's ours from ancestral time that don't really feel like ours because we don't really have the right to the land because of the way the government is treating us. We went to war against the Nicaraguan government for over 70 years in the 1980s, and we were supposed to live in fee peace after seven years of war. But that peace never came. So we hope that our Christ our cries would be heard from the people that watching this. And as Mr. Gary was saying, he explained that what's going on in our land, um, the government are giving concession to Chinese without our authorization, without our agreement. And they giving us land of the Mosquito people to even to Russia and to other countries that comes there without cons uh, consulting the uh, truthful owners of th those lands. So it's a lot that I can, I would like to say, but uh, I wouldn't be finishing that uh, today. So um, for me, in a brief word, what we hear, our purpose is for see if we, if our cries can be. I am Reverend Josephine E. Robertson, MTT, also known as the Matriarch of Miskito Nation. By bloodline of royalty, but we are not here fighting for royalty, we are fighting here for our people. We put our life in your hands. We are asking for your signature to stop this canal, the Chinese and Ortega Channel. We also are asking you for your signature for the freedom of Miskito Nation, our independence from 1894 to today. They have been exploiting and exporting the entirely Miskito territory. And we, our people, are dying for hungry. Please help. Today for us, but eventually tomorrow for you. God bless you. Thank you. My name is Alasio Holmes Bennett. Um, I am here traveling from Houston, Texas. We reached yesterday, and our proposed is talk about our situation, the Mosquitia land, our uh, Nicaragua Mosquito Indians, and we're trying to um, talk about our needs. Um, I am one of the fighters in 1980 and from 
1990, uh, when we get into ceasefire, we got uh, 25 years with um, one autonomy government, but really is not in function because Nicaraguan government keep on controlling all the political and administration situation in our land, in the Mosquitia side, our Caribbean coast. So we're trying to talk about that to United Nations, to international governments like United States, England, or any other country to make them know our situation. We got a really, really, really um, bad economic problem because the country of Nicaragua is really keep on progressing development, but just the Pacific side, not the Mosquito area. So now we're trying to, um, the people, the Mosquito Indians living in the United States try to conform a corporation and go ahead and trying to to work in our area and work for development our region. I hope um, our proposal could go in good and final um, situation. So in this moment, we just asking all to all the countries to help us because we got a almost like 95 percent, I could say 99 percent, um, this employee is no work, is no company in our area, no investment. So we're trying to um, keep on doing that. Um, try to develop our region. Thanks once again, and don't leave us alone. Yeah, my name is uh, Gary Mitchell, and I work as a chief advisor with the Mosquito Nation. And mainly my purpose here is to bring out some of the problems that they're, they're experience, experiencing over there, some of the possible remedies, and just kind of bring to light their situation because it's not well known all over the U.S., I guess all over the world, you might say. It's almost like a forgotten people. And uh, I would like to point out part of the reason for the U.S. not being more active in it isn't because they don't know. It isn't because they're not aware. They have a peacekeeping force in Managua, a Marine battalion. They guard the American embassy there, and they're well aware of any problems that are going on. But people that are aware aren't doing anything about it. So it kind of looks like the United States is playing possum over there. They know that something needs to be done. They know that something is going to happen. But it's also kind of characteristic of our country that we sit back and wait and watch and ignore situations until we can't ignore them anymore. I mean, this was true of the First World War, the Second World War, the Korean conflict. We failed to act there before, before when we could have. And uh, we're doing the same thing here, but I believe we're doing it with a reason I'm not sure exactly what that reason is, but I'm, I am sure of one thing, it's economic. And I'm sure that we need to do something about that to change that situation. We've got children that are starving all over the world. 
we not neglect to talk about the children in the mosquito, mosquito nation that are starving. We talk readily about Africa, we other places in the world, but we never talk about that. We never think about that. I I write things and uh, people say, "Oh, I wasn't aware of that." Gee, tell me more. Well, uh, that's what we're trying to do. That's my purpose is to help to bring that out.